Is it possible to be monogamous with one rule set for 40 years? Is it okay to flirt with other rule sets, particularly if their name is Marie Louise? All of that and a mug of tea in this episode. The division between the rule sets uh, boils down in many regards to uh, how complicated and what level of uh, detail uh, you might find in them. The game set that seems to be the simplest and has the uh, quickest playtime uh, are the ones from the uh, 80s and 90s and earlier. These are the ones here from either Clash of Arms or from Marshall Enterprises that had a very simplified system where you have uh, your charge phase, your movement phase, your combat phase, and then the reorganization phase. And it just would go back and forth with each player. And uh, the key element uh, for all of these types of, of uh, games was that the command and control was relegated based on a f amount of time that each player had to uh, move their pieces during the movement phase. Starting in the 1990s, Clash of Arms began putting out rules that had a more detailed and nuanced command control. These included the Regulations 23, then the Marie Louise rules, and finally the Regulations of the Year 30, these all had a command control structure that included the units being within a certain radius of their division leader or brigade leader, uh, who were then in radius of their uh, corps commander and army commander. They also introduced an element of combat with melee, where the uh, infantry units would roll to close. That is, they had to build up some steam on their way in uh, for making a assault on, an, on another unit. Um, these uh, rules were then uh, added upon with the regulations of the year 30, which also included ammunition wagons, uh, additional rules for um, cavalry and the nuances of cavalry. Uh, and adding what many of the gamers call additional chrome or additional realism uh, to the rule sets. The fifth edition rules are a bit of a hybrid. They have the command control, maneuver unit, and chit pull uh, elements of the previous Clash of Arms systems, but they also have the time movement element. And these rules uh, were similar to ones that were put out with the Battle of Dresden, and are now available with the Battle of Ligny. Which rule set is right for you is going to depend on uh, what type of gameplay you're doing and what level of detail you're comfortable with. The Marie Louise rules are a pared down version of the Regulations uh, 30. Uh, they have many of the same elements with the command control, the chit pull, and the rolling to close for the assaults but they lack many of the details with the cavalry combat and the uh, ammunition uh, resupply uh, that are found in the other set. Uh, they're a great way for beginners to get going and they're also nice with the chit pull if you're playing solo or solitaire um, it adds an element of surprise and some variation by not knowing exactly what's going to happen next. The Marshall Enterprise uh, Premier Rules are great for both team play as well as face-to-face, uh, -face, one -on one-on-one, as well as uh, solo play. They uh, have the uh, pared-down command control, which is based entirely on uh, how much time you have in the maneuver segment to uh, move all your combat units. Uh, it makes for a very quick and fun play um, without a lot of the details that are found in some of the other systems. 
The uh, fifth edition rules, as I said, is a bit of a hybrid uh, with the elements of uh, both the uh, uh, Regulations 30 and a little bit of the uh, older style of play with the timed movements. Uh, I haven't had a chance to play this system yet. I did a little bit of it in the Dresden game and it was fun and it went along fairly smoothly. Um, so I haven't had a chance to actually do it with a full fifth edition, but with the Dresden set, it went very nicely. Finally, with the uh, Regiment uh, 30, uh, this one has the most quote-unquote chrome. Uh, it has the greatest amount of detail and tries to present uh, the most realistic uh, type of simulation that you can find and still have a playable game set. And it's good for both face-to-face uh, -face play as well as solo play. And remember that cup of tea? After you've finished your Earl Grey, dry it out and use it to drop in your maneuver units and other chits as part of the game. Cheers and have fun.